All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to another video. As always, an easy and free way to support the channel is by leaving a like, a comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and by subscribing if you haven't already done so. All right, so moving into today's video, uh, I want to go over how REST web services work in Salesforce. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. First things first, let's go ahead and create a brand new class to kind of show that off. I'm going to create a new Apex class in a developer console. And let's just call this, um, in this case, this scenario I'm going to think of, or we're just going to simply um, create a web service that went called it just returns like hello world or something. So um, let's just call this hello world um, web service. That uh, should make sense. Okay. So let's go ahead and create that class. Uh, first thing we need to do is at the top define an annotation. Um, we are creating a REST web service. So we need to call this REST resource if i can type correctly rest resource and then here is where we kind of provide the url for it so url mapping is equal to whatever you would like in this case i'm just going to set it to hello world like this and i'll just do all lowercase to make it simpler and then we're going to define a four slash um asterisk which basically means that's just a wild card um, I won't get too much into that today. Uh, it's just keeping it rather simple. So anyways, once we've defined that, um, one of the requirements is we need to change it from public access into a global with sharing. And that's just one of the requirements for a REST web service. Uh, I will provide a trailhead um, link. That way you guys can um, follow that along as well if you guys are interested anyway so once we have all that defined we can finally start defining our our verbs so for example we have access to you know get post patch all the other ones in fact let me pull up another tab just to show you guys that trailhead i was referring to um, if we scroll down you'll see here these are all the actions we have access to uh, for this case, I'm just simply going to do the get. Um, I, I think that kind of illustrates enough about the web, the REST web service to get us started. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave a link down in this, the description box below if you're interested in going through this trollhead yourself. So back in our class, I'm going to use another annotation. And this time we're going to say this is an HTTP get. And then here, let's go ahead and define our method. So global and then static. And then we can give this any name. I'll just call this hello world. Name doesn't really matter as much. So for this method inside, um, we're just going to very simply just return a string. And we're going to say hello world. So let's go ahead and put a semicolon and hit save on that. So we are getting an error message. I think I missed something. Yep, I missed the return type. So we want to be able to return a string. Pretty simple. Okay, so now we have this REST web service defined in our org. Um, to be able to have someone call this, we basically have to provide some type of authentication mechanism. So the scenario I'm imagining is, you know, you're at work and you receive a request that uh, some external service wants to connect with your organization. And your task is basically to, you know, provide them some endpoints to which they can call to retrieve or post information to your org. Um, in this case, we've now created this REST web service that will allow that external service to basically uh, call um, this method, which would be get to retrieve some information. Um, but in order for them to call it, we have to create some type of authentication mechanism to which they can call to. And one of the most popular authentication mechanisms is by using the user username password flow. Uh, and to kind of demonstrate that, let's go back into our uh, org and let's go into the setup. 
And in order to do that username password flow, uh, we need to create a connected app. Click on App Manager. And once we're in App Manager, on the top right hand corner, you should have this button for new connected app. Let's click on that. And let's give it a name. In this case, in this case, I want to call it the Hello World. And with the space, Hello World Web Service. Uh, feel free to give it any name you want and a contact email as well. In this case, I'm going to give it an email. And then in the second section right here under API enable OAuth settings, I'm going to check it. Uh, the callback URL, uh, I'm just going to set it to be the URL here, here since we're not going to really be using that. And the scope you want to provide is this one right here, access and manage your data. So let's go ahead and select that and send it, check it to their side. Uh, everything else should be fine. Um, we're not doing anything crazy with SAML or using an app handler or anything like that for this video. So let's just go ahead and click save. And then you'll get this message saying that it could take up to 10 minutes for you know the connected app to start working. That's fine. Let's click on continue. Once we do that, uh, we should be redirected to our Hello World web service. And the important pieces of information that we need are the consumer key and the consumer secret. So using these together, along with um, this thing called the security token, um, our external partner should be able to call our web service. Uh, now, in order for this to work, um, like I said, we need a security token. And, and the way that will work is your, the external service prov uh, provider that wants to connect to your org, you're going to have to basically set up a user for them. Um, because, uh, the, the, each user in the system basically has a security token attached to them. Um, and to kind of demonstrate how that works is, for example, let's say if this user, which is my own user, if the, if this was a user that we were going to be providing to that external, um, provider, um, we would give them their security token. So if I click on settings here uh, we get redirected to the settings and then there's this option right here to reset my security token uh, when you click on that the user will be emailed their own security token as you can see here um, it looks like it got sent to their to their email um, if we see how that looks like it should look something like this so that, that'll, that'll be the username and that'll be the security token um, I might have to blank some of this information out because it's I mean, not, not that it's sensitive, but, you know, I, I don't want this information to be exposed. Uh, but using the security token along with the consumer secret and the, uh, yeah, uh, consumer uh, client ID and the consumer secret, uh, we should be able to create a, a, uh, a, a, a call to the web service. Um, and I guess to kind of demonstrate that, I'll be using uh, Postman, which is a pretty popular tool for uh, creating uh, requests and sending them, out, them off to a web service. So once this loads, uh, the first thing we need to do is basically um, authenticate ourselves, which will give us an authorization key. And once we have that authorization key, we're then free to call our web service. So I'll provide the URL. I'll leave that in the description box below. Um, but the one you're going to use in, um, at least this case is going to be login.salesforce.com. Um, if you're using a sandbox environment, it would be test.salesforce.com. Um, in this case, I'm using a trailhead org. So I think for, for our purposes, it's login.salesforce.com. And then next you'll want to write in, uh, services. Slash, uh, uh, forward slash OAuth2 forward slash token and then here we're going to provide some um, per query parameters the first one is going to be uh, grant underscore type 
And like I said, we're using the username password flow. So in this case, the value of this would be password. The second one will be the client ID, which we'll get from the web service. Uh, the third one will be client secrets, which we will also get from the connected app. And then we have to pass in the username as well as the password. And that should be it. Uh, so kind of to bring it all back together in case I haven't explained it very well. The reason why we, why we have to set up a user for our external provider that will be calling this web service is because uh, with this username password flow, as you can see here, we have to provide the username of the, of the Salesforce user that wants to use this. And for the password, it, it will be their actual login password plus the security token, and it'll just be appended. Uh, with that, um, when you call this uh, this endpoint, uh, it'll see that you know it's it's the user um, that was set up in our org that wants to to call out um, and be authenticated. I hope that makes sense, and I'm explaining it <laughs> relatively okay. Anyways, so let's go ahead and start grabbing that information. So uh, let's go back into our org and go into setup once more, and then let's search for apps and let's go to the app manager once we're in here let's look for our hello world click on this and let's just click on view and then here let's copy the consumer key let's go back to postman consumer key is equal to client key paste that in consumer secrets let's reveal it let's go ahead and copy that and let's paste it in the client secrets. Uh, my username, uh, my username is this right here. And then for the password, I don't want to expose that to you guys. So very simply, I'll open up a um, just a text editor, Notepad. It's fine. And the way it works, or rather, what you need for password. Um, so if we if we pretended that our username login password is like you know like pass one two three. And if the security token that you should have been emailed uh, once we reset it was something like um, uh, ST123, then the password parameter that we want to pass in would be something like, would be pass123 and then ST123. So like I said, you're basically just appending your username and password with the security token. And that is the, 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 the password um, parameter that you use. Uh, right here. So I'll go ahead and blank that out because like I said, I don't want to expose that personal information. Uh, and with all that together, uh, we need to do a couple more things. Uh, we need to change this to a post. And then uh, also, I believe here in the URL, we need to say it's HTTPS. Um, that is something it requires or else I think. You, so if we do that correctly, we hit send. Uh, it looks like now we're getting authentication failure and that's probably because that's uh, I'm using an incorrect password. Yep, so once uh, I put in my correct password, you'll see here we'll get a response back. So once we've gone ahead and successfully authenticated, meaning that we got our access token, we can then go ahead and create another request, which will be the call to our actual web service this time. And for the URL, uh, it was given to us here in the instance URL. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this right here. So I'll copy and then paste it here. Um, and then we need to do a forward slash. And then uh, I guess I already have it defined it here. It's uh, it will be forward slash services forward slash apex rest followed by our, the URL, URL mapping we, we uh, defined in our West rest web service, which is hello world. So once we have all of that, let's click on headers here. And then we need to provide a, a key value pair of the authorization. So that's the key authorization. And then the value will be authorization colon space bearer. And then we need to grab that, that uh, access token that was provided to us in the authentication call. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and then paste it here. Make sure you have a space after bearer. So if you did that right, uh, we should be able to click send and then we get our output, which is hello world. That's the response. And as you can see here in the rest web service, um, that's what we define as a to return. 
So if I went ahead and uh, provided uh, some additional info, so like hello world, how are you? And we clicked on save. And we go back into our postman and we hit send we should see um, a new message. Hello world, how are you? So uh, that's basically how to create a REST web service and also how to call it using the username password authentication flow. So feel free to leave down in the comment section below if you have any questions um, or suggestions. And I hope this made sense to you guys uh, and uh, thanks for you watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.